Saving Enough for Retirement by Bonnie Dixon. This probably doesn't surprise you, but when people consider retirement, the things that concern them about retirement is not about where they will travel or how to stay involved with their community. It's the fear of running out of money. Stress about finances causes people to lose sleep and makes it difficult for them to concentrate at work. Just prior to COVID in 2020, Capital One released a study in which they found that for 77% of Americans, financial stress dominated how they felt about the future. 58% reported that finances controlled the lives, their lives. We're going to get back to that study because they had suggestions about how to resolve that stress and it didn't involve giving up a cup of joe at your local Starbucks. We cannot seriously reflect on finances without reviewing the global pandemic. First, because it affected nearly everyone, governments and individuals alike. And second, because it's shown a light that never before on the holes in retirement system. Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, TCRS, a nonprofit dedicating to educating the public on retirement trends, compiled a report in 2021 on retirement readiness with some dire predictions, beginning with the statement, retirement systems around the world operate on a three-pillar model or a three-legged stool, including social security, workplace retirement benefits, and personal savings. We have concluded that a more robust social contract is very is needed, very dire indeed. That study come as it did at the end of the pandemic saw reason to be concerned about the stress testing of household financial resources as about 20% of workers globally dipped into retirement savings and 36% either were forced to or chose to reduce their expenses to handle their financial new financial pressures. About 73% of the survey respondents felt that recovery from the pandemic would take 12 months or less. About 8% thought they would never recover. It would be interesting to see if their fears were borne out, but that study, while it may be in the works, won't be available for a while. The good news is that despite the pandemic, despite the change in face of global economies, TCRS found reason to be positive finding that the proportion of people saving habitually is at an all-time high since they first began researching the topic 10 years ago. In fact, they found that while no good can be said to have come from the pandemic, our survey findings demonstrate that the shock of having one's employment unexpectedly affected has led to more workers considering and setting forth long-term financial plans. I'm reminded strongly of how the depression continued to affect the silent generation long afterwards, despite only lasting 10 years. While the disruption from the pandemic seemed traumatic, if relatively short-lived, at least in comparison, only time will tell if individuals and governments approach financial situations differently as a result of COVID. Remember, Back a few paragraphs ago, I said that Capital One had some suggestions about finances. That study called Mind Over Money suggested that having a healthy mindset about money impacts how people can address financial issues. According to the study, people under financial stress make poorer decisions about money, are worse at saving and budgeting, are more impulsive and are less likely to agree that success comes to people who work hard. In fact, this effect was true regardless of income or credit score. So what do they recommend to get people over the hump of financial stress? They asked study participants to do some mindset exercises in which they thought about long-term goals for seconds. I'm going to say that again, seconds. Those seconds can reverse the effects of stress causing people to improve their saving and budgeting moves and becoming more confident in dealing with their finances. Here are their recommendations for building a better money mindset. Put off making important financial decisions until you are less stressed. 
Find a time when you are naturally relaxed and able to put the time and energy into considering the long-term impacts of your decisions. This can be viewed in multiple ways. One way to view it is to find a way to give you the space to make a prudent financial decision. When your car is starting to have expensive car issues and you must consider buying a new car is not when you should be trying to save money for the new car. Same idea for considering if you need to downsize or move to a new location. Don't put off the decision until you must do those things. It's okay putting off doing them until later, but have a plan in place for the next steps in your life. Focus on whether money decisions align with your goals. Sure, this could be about the cup of joe at Starbucks, but more likely it's about whether you need the largest screen for your living room wall or whether retirement now will allow you to meet your future goals. Be goal-directed with your accounts. Thinking about paying for a new roof, the time to think about it is not the year it begins to leak. Actively put money aside for those big ticket items you cannot put off or ignore. Even if you don't save for the whole amount, having something set aside will decrease the impact the actual purchase makes on your financial life. By breaking big goals into smaller achievable goals, you're more likely to achieve your goals. The Motley Fool has some great tools for money. I especially like the Emergency Fund Calculator but they are all a great resource for finding a specific amount to aim for. You can find the list of calculators at www.fool.com. That includes calculators for long-term care, figuring out how long savings will last, and more. Nothing speaks to retirement savings more than a 401k. If your workplace has one, set up an automatic payment to that account. An easy way to achieve saving to a 401k is to put away a small percentage with an automatic increase every year. Over a few years, you will eventually increase your percentage without even noticing. If retirement savings are treated as essential services like rent or utilities, then you will put the needed focus on them to succeed. Be kind to yourself. If you actively beat yourself up for prior decisions, you'll become frozen about financial decisions that are here and now. Instead, give yourself some grace. Remember the good decisions you have made and resolve to make better decisions in the future, then let it go. Focus on the things you can control. Rather than focusing on the problem, focus on what you can do to overcome the problem and create strategies you're able to control. I don't recommend planning on winning the lottery as it hasn't worked for me yet. Write out your goals and place your goals in a place you see on a regular basis. Share your goals with people you trust and avoid the haters. If your goal is something other people can be involved in, such as starting a business, find people who share your goals so that you are always getting the positive feedback you need to make your goals easier to achieve. Finally, Take your mind off your financial concerns completely. Find something good to do for someone else. It will feed your soul with po positive energy, temporarily take your mind off from things that cause you stress and provide a break from stress so you can come back with a fresh approach. <music>